and welcome again. All right, hallelujah. We're talking about the subject of prayer. We're, we're using Ephesians 6. 12 is our basis. And uh, remember, it says all prayer or one translation says all kinds. Another says manner of prayer. Okay. There's great writing. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So Ephesians 6. Um, Why did I say 12? 18, guys. I'm sorry. Y'all should have caught me there. Okay? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, or all saints. So again, praying always with all prayer or all kinds of prayer. <clears throat> we have talked about over the past couple of weeks that, you know, that we talk about seven different types of prayer. Prayer of believing, receiving, also called the prayer of faith. Prayer of binding and loosing, which is an authority prayer. Prayer of worship or adoration. And, and I kind of left this out, so I'm, I'm putting it in here with this. Praise, um, prayer of thanksgiving. And again, we talked about these, these being heart. This was heart, you know, uh, consecration, dedication. Um, this is others, you know, seeking for others. And um, this is faith, daily walk prayer. That means you don't do that. You can't do these daily. It just means we we have to live by these. We do these. We, you know, so um, just kind of a, somewhat of a categorization for them, okay? And so we we uh, shared and talked about how that you know the number one prayer we like we talk about a lot of times is the prayer of believing and receiving. Mark, you know, we get, get Mark eleven twenty two through twenty six here. A lot of times we use that scripture to support this. Talk about here how Jesus said, you know, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Talk about we, we were into talking about authority and exosia and how we have exosia over the enemy. And um, uh, we didn't quite, you know, maybe cover all that ground. So let's maybe uh, run over. So um, we talked about how Jesus said, uh, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt thee. Okay? And... Um, in Luke chapter 10, okay, so we, we covered Luke 10, 19 here. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt thee. Now remember, he said that in response to, he had sent them out two by two, the 70 out two by two in front of him, um, and gave them authority, you know, and, and told them to uh, <clears throat> preach the gospel, to heal the sick, raise the dead, eat whatever was before them. If they didn't receive, shake the dust off their feet. And they came back rejoicing, and saying, even the devils are subject to us under thy name. And he said, you know, behold, I give you, you know, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Remember, we talked about that, how that, <coughs> that was Satan falling out of heaven when he tried to overthrow God. And Jesus witnessed him leaving the throne room at 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light. Okay? And then he says, that I give you power or authority. Remember, we talked about how that the word there, the first word for power here, that first word in, in the King Jimmy is exosia, authority. Exosia in the Greek. Authority. And over all the power, the second one is, is power. But that's dunamis. In the Greek, that means miraculous power, you know, supernatural power. Um, so miracle power, supernatural. And Satan does have supernatural power. Uh, it's foolish to not think he does. Satan has supernatural power. And so, um, but we've been given exorcism, we've been given authority. Over all the dunamis, okay, dunamis, dunamis, that's an S, miraculous power, supernatural power of the enemy. We got, we've got authority over that. And, you know, what does that mean? It means this exosia is only as good as what stands behind it. And what stands behind the exosia that Jesus gave to us through the authority of his name. Remember, we talked about Matthew uh, 28. I believe it's the verse 18. Mark. 
16, you know, verses 15 through the end of the chapter. Okay, you know, uh, I, in my name you'll cast out devils, in my, you know, um, go preach the gospel and in my name. Okay. Jesus said, talked about power of attorney, how his name is going to get, he's granted unto us power of attorney to use his name. So that's the exosia, that's the authority, the, the, the name of Jesus. Uh, this, this is Jesus' name. And quite frankly, I, I know, and I don't, I don't try to be nitpicky, thought, but uh, you know, um, this is not referring to the Christ. We pray in Christ's name. It's not you know the name of Jesus. There is there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Okay. It's the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's the name of Jesus. Christ is, Lord is his title. Jesus is his name. Christ is what he is. Okay? Now, we know that um, Christ, the Greek, uh, Christos, okay, in the, in the Greek, and uh, Ham, Mashiach. I'm not really sure if I'm getting this right in Hebrew. Okay? Okay, close, anyway. So we get the English Christ out of this one. Um, but they, they both mean um, Messiah or literally mean anointed one. Okay, so we get the name Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Hebrew, this is Yeshua. Y-E-S-H-U-A. That's the English transliteration of the Hebrew lettering. Okay, we get Yeshua, um, and, and literally, now this, <laughs> Joshua. Okay, that's the name Joshua, all right? I, um, I was recently doing, I was asked to, uh, to lead a prayer at, at school the other day, uh, at, at, not at school, but at an after-school event for, for an organization, a statewide organization was coming, and they asked me to come and do a, a prayer at the meeting, and I thought, what if they come up to me and tell me, that, you know, I can't pray in the name of Jesus? And I thought, okay, all right, I got it. All right, I won't do it. I won't pray in that name. I would just pray in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. <laughs> it would be the same thing. Yeshua Hamashiach, you know, the, you know, the um, Jesus, the anointed one, Joshua, the anointed one. Really, <clears throat> and actually, if you look in, in Hebrews, not Hebrews, um, Acts, they refer to Joshua in one place. It's really G the name is Jesus. It's Jesus, but it's, re it's referring to Joshua because it's the same Greek word. It's the same Hebrew word, okay? Um, the name Jesus by itself was nothing special except it was given to Jesus, the Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and his name, spoken in his name, has the authority, okay? Um, a lot of people were named Joshua or Yeshua. His was special. And it, you know, I mean, how many of you have seen Hispanics or Latinos named Jesus? It's Jesus, you know? I mean, you, go, you, you write down some, somebody that's not cultured at all in any foreign language, they go, hey, your name's Jesus? You know, that's sacrilegious. No, it's, it's, it's a, it, was a, it was a common name, except when it was given to Christ. His name was given to him and it, made, it became greater than any other name specifically in reference to him, the Lord title. He's our Lord. Okay? Jesus, his, his name, and Christ, what he is. And that was, he was an, he's the anointed one. Okay? Literally, the anointed one. He is the anointed one. Okay? And so, you know, he has a title. Like I'm, you know, reverend, you know, a name. And... Description. This is really a description. Okay? Anointed. Okay? So Lord Jesus, you know, it, it, it's, it sets him apart as, as, as equal to the Father. Okay? And so, it is this, but it's this name that he's given us in the church that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we have been given delegated authority now let's go back a little bit because 
Um, how could God, you know, remember Jesus didn't come, in, in doing a new thing, he was really reestablishing what God intended. Man fell in the Garden of Eden. Man had authority in the beginning. It wasn't, you know, that, um, you know, Jesus showed up, got all this authority that was never, that uh, no one ever had and all this kind of stuff and, you know. Um, I believe, let's see what day it is. Here we go. Okay, so at Genesis 1, okay, and we'll look down here in verse 26. We'll start in verse 26, okay? We'll start in 26. Okay, it says here, and God said, let us make man. Now, God, while we're here, all right, the word God here in Genesis 1 is Elohim. Literally in the Hebrew, okay, and that's just in the Hebrew now, because, you know, Old Testament we're talking about. Hebrew primarily a little Chaldean, but mostly Hebrew, almost, but almost uh, mostly Hebrew, some Chaldean. Okay, but it means majesty, majesty in the plurality of three or more. Okay, well, that don't take us long to figure out, does it? Three or more, I'm just going to put F, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, okay, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, okay, so, and Elohim said, and so, Elohim said, okay, that's what it says, and God said, and Elohim said, let us, okay, wasn't talking about, you know, a council of gods from all over the universe that, you know, we're all getting together, and they were, you know, former humans on some planet somewhere, and went off and had their own planet, and had a bunch of spiritual children, <coughs> <coughs> And we'll just mess with Mormon doctrine real quick. Okay? Now, now, that's what they believe. The Elohim was a man at one time, and he went off with his God wife, and they became procreators of a planet at Earth, and these were all, all, were all his children. Uh, bar from Gag and Maggot. Okay. you got to have devils to come up with stuff like that. Okay? And the angel Moroni is who appeared to Joseph Smith that gave him all that. Notice how many, how many false cults are, revolve around sex. See, men can have all these wives just have sex all the time. They're going to get married in the temple and run off to another planet and have sex forever. It just, just revolves around sex. That's devils, okay? But Elohim. So in Genesis 1, okay, down here in verse 26, it says, And God, or Elohim, God in the majesty or plurality of three or more, Okay, said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Notice what he says. And let them have what? Dominion. Dominion. What kind of word is dominion? Thank you. That's what I was looking for. It's an authority. It's, it's authority. When you have dominion over something, you have authority over it. Okay? If I've got dominion over you, I have authority over you. Okay? And so he said here, let us make man in our image, uh, after our likeness, let them have dominion over what? Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I love what Buddy Harrison used to say. He said, thank God we got authority over creeps. <laughs> okay? Hallelujah. You know, we've been given authority over creeps. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God, God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And blessed them. And said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the earth, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth over every living thing that 
moveth or, or moves about on the earth. Now, God gave man authority over what? Where? God gave man authority over everything on the earth. Everything. Man was not subject to anything on the earth. It was subject to man. That's what God's command was. Okay? And uh, verse 28, verse 28, 26 through 28. God is granting his created man authority over everything on the earth. Everything. Think about that. Over everything that creepeth, everything that moves on the earth, over the fish. Over, so he gave us authority over the seas. He gave us authority over land. He gave us authority over the skies. And anything that moved, we had authority over it. Everything. We get a glimpse of it in the ministry of Jesus. Because the storms couldn't do anything to him. People couldn't do anything to him. Remember, when they, get, they came out one day to throw him off the cliff. And he passed through the midst of them. It wasn't until he said, I lay my life down and I take it up again. No man take it from me. Until he laid his life down, they couldn't take him to the cross. <coughs> the reason he, as a lamb before the shearer, he did not open his mouth was he could have stopped it. Remember the old song, the old church song, he could have called 10,000 angels. You know, that day, you know, yeah. No, there's another song. There's an old, there's an old hymn in the church. He could have called 10,000 angels. Okay? I don't think it was on his mind. There's another song that we used to sing in the church before that. Okay? That, but that he, could have, he, could have, he could have called legions. He actually said, I could call legions. They could have come. They would have come. They would have, they would have been in obedience. They would have come. And it not, would not have been a good day for anybody. He would have messed up every, uh, the plan. That's why he had to not say anything. He had to submit himself to the will of the Father and say, not my will, but thy will be done. And then he shut his mouth. That's another story there. Once you submit it to the will of God, if you can't say anything that you're, that you're not supposed to say, shut up. Okay? Just zip it. Okay? Because uh, you don't want to mess it up. So God tells him in Genesis uh, 1, Mankind, they have authority over everything. They said, subdue it. What are you going to subdue? God just got done creating this thing, didn't he? Now, I am a proponent of the gap theory. Um, the gap theory being that there was a pre creation uh, prior to Adam. Um, when you look at Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2 says, And the earth was vo form, without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And um, we have an, it's an interesting thing there. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we could, you, know, you could argue and say, I believe in the seven actual days of creation. And I do. I believe in the seven days of, of recreation. Okay. Um, Okay, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of where it is. I don't have that verse right here in front of me. But it says here, and the earth was voided without form. That, uh, the word um, without form in Hebrew is tohu, T-O-H-U. We have a verse in Jeremiah where it says, and God said, and I create nothing, tohu. Well, if he creates nothing, tohu, but he created the earth, tohu, then we got a tohu problem. Hello? I believe between Genesis 1-1 one, one and Genesis 1-2 is what Jesus saw, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We get evidence in Ezekiel that, you know, Satan walked on the earth as Lucifer, the morning star. He's, his, he was covered in, in, in precious jewels and uh, you know, in rubies and emeralds and so forth. The tablets came out of him. And so he was, he was a glorious being. Think of him being a, a being of light with all these, covered in all these 
these uh, jewels and light coming through them. He was a, that's when he got lifted up until iniquity was found in thee. And he said, I'll ascend my throne. What throne? What throne did he have? He, 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 was, he was ruling over the earth at the time. And tried to ascend his throne into heaven and overthrow God. And God cast him as profane out of his mouth, out of his presence. He came into the earth. He hit the earth. And the earth became void and without form. One of the other signs of evidence, evidence I point to is in Genesis 126, where God said, be fruitful and multiply, or, and through 26 through 27, 28, and replenish the earth. We have evidence of a pre-Adamic race. Um, when, we talk, when Daniel was set his fast and the king of Persia, you know, the prince of Persia was watched over, the, and they, they didn't want to be cast into the pit before the time. You know, they were ruling over certain countries. Demons didn't want to leave certain areas. We, and and we, we look at that as disembodied, humanoid type spirits prior to Adam. Now I know this gets a little heavy. You know, and this you know we, we see internal evidence in the Bible. I can't prove it clear cut. You can't disprove it clear cut. But it answers a lot of things. It answers how the behemoth was here. Okay? We answer, you know, the you know the dating of millions of years um and whatever. And the Bible having a 6,000 so, so, circa 6,000 year time frame on, on our history here. It, is, it just answers so many questions without trying to make stuff up. Yeah, we only have the behemoth dinosaurs. We're talking about dinosaurs. You know, how dinosaurs could walk at the same time a, a humanoid type man did. It would give you, uh, there's the missing link. It, it did get linked. Okay? But there was a humanoid type in, 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 in spirit being, okay? And God wiped it out by the flood. You know, it was a flood. That whole thing was flooded, wiped out that whole, the whole earth. And God came in and, brought, and, and started, let the earth bring forth after his kind. Let this thing happen. Let this happen. And created man in his image after his likeness after his kind. Let him have dominion over the earth. Let him, have, let him subdue it. What are you going to subdue it from? Satan, because the Bible says he came down having great wrath. He wanted to rule the earth again. Okay? Now, listen. This, I don't teach this as doctrine. Okay? You can say, Pastor, I don't agree with a thing you said. And when I'm still going to love you, and then we're going to go home and just going to be hallelujah, how, happy Jesus time anyway. Because this ain't going to affect whether you go to heaven or not. Okay? It's not going to affect anything about being born again at all. Okay? This has nothing to do with your walk with the Lord as far as being saved and, you know, not being saved. This is not, it's not a thing where you just fall start you're going to burn in hell for believing that. Either way, you're not going to burn in hell for believing one side or the other. Okay? But this does help us understand authority in God's plan and how Satan came down. And then we get in Genesis 3, and he comes and, 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 and he, he's more subtle than all the creatures on the earth. Okay, and he comes to deceive Adam to Eve first, and then Adam, who's standing like a deer in headlights, going, blah, 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 blah. all he had to do was do the commandment that God gave him: subdue it, subdue it. That's all he had to do. And the minute that Satan showed up and started talking to Eve, he all he had to do was take dominion. Instead, dum dum stood there and went, a uh, uh, you know, my name's Rocky. Adrian, don't do it. I mean, he was not on the back side of the garden at the Crystal Lake fishing. I still remember the Sunday school pictures. Eve comes up, she's got her hair down because she's naked, covered up, you know, covered up with her hair, with the apple to give it. We don't even know it was an apple. It was just a, it was just a um, fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? It could have been a coconut. It could have been a pear. Okay? So we, we just don't know. We do know that God had given Adam authority. Satan came down the earth. So, so we have this, I, I, believe, I believe, in the gap theory. And, and another thing is, the Hebrew word here where it says, and the earth was... <coughs> That, that verb in the Greek can be translated became. Became. See, was would say he created it like that. 
became would mean it was something else and became void and without form. Yeah, that's why I said that. Yeah, where were you? I said we had a tohu problem. If, if, if he created it in tohu and we, Jeremiah says he didn't create anything in tohu, we got a tohu problem. Where were you? You heard that, didn't you, Dick? You heard me earlier, didn't you? Yeah. To did you all hear me on the tohu? Everybody heard me on the tohu. <laughs> tofu. <laughs> God didn't create tofu either. I, I guarantee you that. Okay. So the earth, you know, you could see that verb as, you know, and, and as the earth became void and without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. Okay? All right. So anyway, so we have this, we have this theory, okay, that there's a gap that, that man, that, that, at, that Satan had tried to overthrow, he got cast out, God comes back in and brings reorder to the earth. Okay. And I think there's, there's some studies that show that archaeologists have proven there have been two major worldwide floods. We know about the flood of Noah. The only other one could be would be the flood of Genesis 1. Okay? That would be the, uh, the only one we have, we have, we'd, ha we'd be able to record, go back in history and say there's no other time we have record of, of, a, of a worldwide flood except possibly Genesis 1 and 1 2. Okay? And, uh, there you have it. Let it be. Not the Beatles version. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So anyway, but God gave man the being. And he told him to subdue. Subdue it. Subdue. The only one that's going to show up he's supposed to subdue is Satan. He's, like, he's got authority over everything. You don't think he's going to have to see. All of creation is already under his authority. Satan's going to come. He's going to have to subdue him. He's going to have to take authority over him. Well, what happens when he shows up? Adam gets a wet noodle, sells out, dies spiritually, turns the whole thing over to the devil. Satan now has control. Can't enjoy it for two seconds, because right after it, he gets control, and, you know, God comes down and says, what have y'all done? And, the, you know, uh, Adam throws his wife under the bus. I mean, it takes him all of two seconds to throw her under the bus. You know what I'm saying? Verse 12 of Genesis 3. And the man said, the woman you got... Uh, uh, wait a second now. Not only did he throw his wife under the bus, he blamed God for giving him the woman. Now, one minute he's going, whoa, man. Next thing, baby, you're under the bus. Yeah, here you go. Okay? So um, God, said, you know, God says, what have you done? He says, um, I heard the voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree wherever I commanded thee not that thou shouldest not eat? Like God didn't know. And the man said, well, let, let's, let me just get this straight. The woman you gave me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said to the woman, what is it you've done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And this God said to the serpent, because you've done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above the beasts of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15. Genesis 3.15. How do I, I need bigger boards. I, I need a rotating board so I can slide stuff down. The virgin birth is prophesied right here. Now, see, the problem with Satan is he knows everything God says comes to pass. He's, he, all he's ever experienced is when God said it, it happened. He tried to pull that off and ran into God talking. I'll send my throne into heaven. I'll be as the most high. I'm going to, basically, I'm going to take over. God says, I cast these profane out of my presence. <laughs> out he went. Okay? And I'll put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman. Between thy seed and her seed. Well, what do women not have? Women don't have seed. Okay? So the virgin birth is prophesied here. <clears throat> and it shall bruise thy head, that is the seed, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God, tell, God says to Satan right there on the spot, you may have gotten the authority, the dominion I gave to Adam, but I'm sending someone 
I like what Jerry Savelle used to say. You know, the, the word bruise your head was an oriental term uh, that meant to break the authority of. Okay? So the word um, bruise thy heel, head, Now remember, the Bible is a, is a Eastern book. The Bible's an Eastern, it's not a Western book. It's written with an Eastern mindset. Okay, so the phrases and terminologies we have to understand have an Eastern slant to them. Well, it's not it's not in the Orient. Yeah, but it's the the East, Middle East. Okay, bruise the head meant to break. The authority of. So the Hebrew, the Hebrew, this Hebrew phrase, in, East, in, in Eastern terminology, meant to break the authority of. So God gets over here. Satan, Satan gets in here, weasels his way in, deceives the woman. The Bible says the man was not the man was not deceived. The woman was, but the man was not. He knew exactly what he was doing. Okay, Satan gets the authority. God comes in, says, okay, you got it, but here's the deal. I'm sending one that's going to break, but take your authority. Now, Jerry Savelle says it meant break the authority. Of, he said down in Texas that meant bust your head. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sending one down here, and he's going to bust your head. All right? So, so Satan's got this authority, and every time somebody shows it looks like he could be Messiah, he goes off and kills all the kids. Moses, when Jesus was born, he killed all the killed children two years and under, remember? Okay? Um, he's always trying to kill because he doesn't want this Messiah born. Why? Wow. Because he's going to bust his head. He's going to break his authority. The authority you gain by deceiving Adam, I'm coming to get. Okay? And it's not sooner or later love is going to get you. Sooner or later... I'm coming to get you, all right? What was that? The grassroots, okay? You know, sooner or later, love is going to get you. You know, well, it wasn't going to be that one. It was going to be sooner or later, I'm going to get you. I'm, take, I'm coming to take you down. But this time, what's going to happen is God's going to get the authority back, and Satan can't give it back from him when God gets it. When Jesus got the authority, <coughs> um, well, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. So, let me, don't, let me jump back and don't get ahead of myself. So God prophesies after, after Satan uh, deceives Eve, she transgresses, turns, and, and then Adam transgresses, turns the authority over Satan. God shows up, questions them. They're throwing everybody on the planet under the bus, you know, because they're not, it's not my fault. I did, you know, I, you know, Han Solo. It's not my fault. I mean, you know, God says, okay, I'm going to tell you how it is. There's, there's a seed coming. It's going to be a supernatural birth in the earth, and it's going to break your authority. Now, you might think you've got something. Let me tell you, buddy, you don't have it forever. I'm coming to get it back. So Satan lives from the Genesis 3.15 until Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, thinking he's got it, but knowing he's not going to be able to keep it because someone's coming to bust his head. Okay? So, um, huh. how, do I, how do I get all this together? <laughs> okay, we know what, we got all the prayers over here, right? We got all that? Okay. Okay. You can go back and look at the video and see what all we wrote up here earlier. You can look last week and see what we wrote up here last week. We wrote the same things. Okay. Over here. Okay. So, we've got man now. In a fallen state without, what has man lost? Lost authority. How does, God, how does man have to communicate with God now? How, how does man interact with God at this, starting at this point? Starting with Adam. God kills the animals and covers their nakedness with disgust and blood was shed. Covenants. Satan now owns authority in the earth, but the way it was set up, you still had to operate through human 
beings on the planet. God set it up that way. You had, you had to have bodies to work through. You had to have humans on the planet in order to function and operate. That's why the demons wanted to, you know, they wanted to possess, you know, even the pigs. They wanted to be in a pig. They wanted to be in some kind of body. Okay? So God and man now have to communicate one with another because God's on the outside. The Adam, he gave Adam the authority over the earth. So do the earth. you got all the authority over everything on the earth. Now God's been shut out. Well, you can't shut God. God can't violate his own word. If I remember when we, when we were leasing our building before, we were, we were, we were, we were in a lease with a, with a business part management company. We could have sublet that building. We could have written a contract and sublet it to someone else. They come in and they paid us and we had to pay. Now the business part did have said if you sublet it, you couldn't make more money on it. If you did, you had to give it to them. Okay? They were smart. You know, you can't lease it for 2000 then and, you know, We lease it from us for 2000 then go make 4000 a month on it. We're not going to let you do that. We're not here so you can make money on us. Uh, well, I understand, like, and I understand that. That's, 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 that's smart business. Okay. But we could have signed it. We could have, we could have sublet someone else. They could not come in there and go, no, you can't be here because we didn't sign a contract with you. No. You signed a contract with them. They sublet it to us. You, what, they, what you gave them is still in force. What they gave us was still in force. Even if I had sublet it to another tenant under us, it was stay, that, that, that contract we had with them was still in force with us. They couldn't just come in and go, no, because you're not faith in the church, you're out of here. No, they couldn't do that. It, was, it would violate the contract. God had sublet the earth to man. I mean, at least the earth, the man. We know that because we see that. Have you come to torment us before the time? See, there's a time that Adam had for mankind on the earth. All right? Have you come to torment us before the time? What time? The time that Adam's leash runs out. See, the devils all knew it. They, they, every, everything in the kingdom of darkness knew it. The third of the angels that fell all knew that it's going to run out. And when it runs out, Whatever was said here is that is going to be fulfilled, and everything about it is going to be fulfilled because your head's going to be busted, boy. He's coming to bust your head. I mean, you, you got to think sometimes that some of the higher up demons or principalities, powers, we look over the devil every once in a while and say, "You do know he's coming to bust your head." You do realize that, don't you? Right. He, he was so messed up, he thought he was going to circumvent that. Okay. So, at, after the, at the fall, God's on the outside looking in. So he begins to function and, and, and commune and operate with man through covenants. The first one is the Adamic. Or Adam, some people call it Adamic because they think they're always cussing by saying Adamic. Okay. <clears throat> You're not cussing. Damn is not a cuss word unless how you use it. To damn something is to condemn it. To use God's name in conjunction with damning is makes, makes God the damner, and he's not. He's the blesser. Okay? All right. Jesus used the word in the Bible. Okay? Okay. The Adamic covenant. First covenant. What, what's God doing? He's getting a way back in to fulfill this. So we see a series of covenants after this. We get the Abrahamic, we get the Mosaic. I mean, we, we got, you know, the Abraham, Mosaic. Okay. There's numerous covenants that God makes throughout history, throughout the nation of Israel. Um, this, is, this is the most powerful Old Testament covenant. Okay. Because it's the one that leads to Christ. If you be Abraham's seed, then are you... I mean, sorry. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise thereof. The promise that was made in the covenant. I'll make your seed as the sand of the seashores and the stars of the heaven. Okay? So the most powerful Old Testament covenant is the Abrahamic. But it was through a series of covenants in the Old Testament that God operated in order to bring this to pass. 
And are we running out of time yet? No, we're not running out of time. We got three more hours. Does anybody want to go sit in the wind and fall out so we can go raise from the dead and finish the rest about tomorrow morning? Okay. Okay. So God begins to operate and communicate with man and function with man. What's he doing? He gets his inroads into the earth through covenants. And he creates a lineage through these covenants in order to bring to pass what he said here. Now, he just couldn't show up and put, and put Messiah here. He had to have a covenant. Now, remember what he told Abraham, um, um, Abraham when he took um, Isaac up to offer him? Because you've done this thing. You withheld not thine son, thine only son. And then he reiterates the covenant. Remember that? Because you withheld not thine own son, thine only son, I will bless thee. He begins to reiterate what he said to him in the beginning. I'm going to bless you as the stars of the heaven, the sand of the seashores. I'll bless them that bless thee and multiply, the, you know, and, and curse him that curse of thee and so forth and so on. But because you withheld not your son. Abraham sowed the seed that the harvest was in Christ. And Christ was the head busting anointed one coming after the devil. And there won't nothing the devil could do to stop it. He tried. He tried. He tried. It didn't work. Kind of like uh, the old Lay's commercial, the old Lay's potato chips commercials. No one can eat just one. He tried, but he couldn't do it. He tried. Okay, you remember that? Okay. All right. So God begins this series of covenants and all about because man's lost his authority. So God just can't walk in and go, no, nope, you can't do that. Yet the Bible, Jesus said, I had the keys of death and hell. How did he get them? And when did he get them? And why didn't he just grab away here in Genesis? Because he didn't have the right to. When Satan overtook him illegally at the cross, he was so hungry for power and thought, at that moment, he had stopped the one sent to bust his head. It was the Trojan horses of all Trojan horses. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. You know? They, they wagged their tongue. And they, they mocked him. They screamed everything else. But I will say in the midst of my brethren, I will praise thy name in the midst of my brethren. Glory to God. Again, I'll be to him a father. He be, he'll be to me a son. Let all the angels of God worship him. Amen? Satan in such a hurry to stop the one who was coming. To, he, he wanted that power. He'd always, that's all he'd ever wanted. Once, he, once iniquity was found in him, all he wanted was the power. He wanted to rule everything. He thought, he tried it with God, got cast out, came back, got it from the man, thought he had it. And then God said, there's one coming to bust your head. Jesus shows up. He tries to kill him at every turn. Try to throw him off cliffs, try to drown him in the water, you know, everything else. And he, they can't, the Satan can't do anything to Jesus until he laid his life down, took him to the cross, overtook him, took his spirit. Satan is having the party of all parties because he had gotten the dominion forever. There wasn't anything God could do about it because God sent his son until because he did it illegally. He didn't have, there was no sin in Jesus. Satan had no right to take him. He had no authority to take him. Jesus let him do it so he would break the law, spiritual law. Then the Bible says, he spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And then in, in the book of Revelation, he appears and said, I am he who is dead and now alive and alive forevermore. I'm the first, the last, the Alpha, the Omega. Glory to God. I had the keys of death and of hell. What did he, he went and got them. Why didn't he do that way back then? We just explained it. He couldn't. Because God had established some things. And God had to work this thing. And God had to work through the covenants. God, Adam, man pushed God to the outside. And God had to work back through man in covenants to get Jesus here so Satan would take him and think he had him and then get defeated. So Jesus defeated him in, 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 in his own backyard. And he spoiled the principality. Literally in the Greek, he spoiled, he hurled back the, 
principalities and powers and made a show of them, triumphing them over them in it. Glory to God. I'm trying to figure out how can I wrap this up and be, you know, and say I'm done. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. This is, I mean, I just love that. This is just great. Because when Jesus hurled back the principalities and was raised up from the dead and ascended to the my God and your God and to our Father and, his, and your Father, praise the Lord, and sat down in his right hand and said, all authority is given to me both in heaven and earth. Therefore, you go and in my name. What Adam had in the garden, Jesus got back Where's in, Matthew, in, 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 in defeating Satan and then in Matthew 28 gave it back to us. But this time, but this time, there's a condition. There is a condition to the authority. Do you know what it is? Jesus has it. He delegates it to us. And we use his name to use that authority. It's not authority we can give away. Okay? So it's limited power of attorney. That, that, that's the term we haven't used yet. We talked about last week how that if you sign a contract and I sign, I say, I sign a piece of paper saying you can go sign my name at the bank, we call it power of attorney. But you can have limited power of attorney. You can limit the scope of the power of attorney without giving somebody full-blown power, power of attorney where they can just sign whatever they want to no matter what, whether you said like it or not. You can limit what they use it for and how they use it. What God did this time Remember, the Bible says that the covenant between man is between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. In Christ, we have the right, the authority to use the name. But we can't give that authority back to the devil. We can give him authority over our life, but we can't give the authority Jesus took from him back to the devil. He's been conquered. He's defeated. He can't, I can't give him the authority of mankind. The only one that has the authority to give his authority to the devil is Jesus. And guess what? It ain't going to happen. He done put a whooping on him. He put a Texas whooping on him and busted his head. Amen. And now he goes and says, okay, I'm limiting the power of eternity to use my name. Cast out devils, raise the dead, heal the sick, take up serpents. In other words, doing the works of God. We have the power. I can't use the power of attorney to make people do what I want them to do. I can't say, in the name of Jesus, Joe, go empty out your bank account and bring it to me. I don't have that authority. And my, the authority that's vested to me in the name of Jesus doesn't allow me to do that. Now, you'll get preachers up there saying stuff like that. The Lord, yeah, but they'll do it this way. The Lord shows me that he's going to give you, make you rich, and all he wants you to do is empty out your bank account and come bring me all your money. And there are people dumb enough to go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Bless your darn heart and stupid head, Brother Hagin used to say. Okay? You don't get to do that. It doesn't work that way. So, when, when God comes back in with these covenants, Abraham, Ab uh, Abrahamic, uh, Mosaic, different ones throughout the Old Testament. Um, like we said, the greatest is the Abrahamic covenant. And Jesus comes and defeats the enemy. He gets back the authority that Adam gave to him that God originally gave to man in Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28. We have authority over the enemy, over Satan, over his kingdom. And as we said earlier, over creeps. Over everything that creepeth upon every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, we got authority over creeps. Okay? We have that authority in the name of Jesus. Now it's not my power. This, this is the beautiful thing. God set it up this time so he couldn't lose it. It couldn't be lost because somebody's an idiot. You could have half the church become idiots. And God still doesn't lose the authority. It still is his. Because Jesus paid the price to get it back. And he delegates it to us. See, delegate. You can, you know, if, you get, now, if you're an ambassador in another country, you can have your ambassadorship revoked. You can have your diplomatic status revoked by your country. Okay? 
you're going around murdering people and they, they, and they, they make a decision to revoke your um, credentials or whatever, you're toast. Okay? A lot of people hide behind diplomatic immunity, but if, if their own country revokes that, they're in trouble. They become subject to everything around them. Okay? God gave it, gives it to us, but we can't give it away and use it in a way that's not right. It's given to us to carry out His will and His works in the earth. Amen? Amen? That's how God set it up. This time, this time, it's set so the enemy can't get it. And then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth have passed away. Glory to God. And God's, when God gets done with this thing at the, at the very end of all things, it's going to be like he had planned from it from the beginning. Ain't going to be no devil because he's going to be in the pit, the lake of fire, the second death. All right? Praise the Lord. Well, I don't think I, I can really cover any more tonight. Um, so uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Um, this is a kind of a teaching you could go on for weeks with. And we might come back and do it again in two weeks because we don't have service next Wednesday night. Okay? All right. Tom, good, good to have you join us tonight, man. Haven't seen him in years. So. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, don't forget, we have church service Sunday, the following Sunday, but next Wednesday night we don't. Okay, community center's closed and so forth, and so uh, we're not going to be able to meet here. And, um, but no, no, we love you. We appreciate you and bless you. And uh, if you need an offering envelope, anybody? Okay, that's fine. All right, if you're giving electronically, go ahead and, and ring her up in uh, Jesus' name. Remember, we love you. God bless you. And until we meet again, remember this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus is Lord. We love you. And we'll see you again next time here at Faith and Victory Church. God bless you.